If you're struggling with slow speeds, an unreliable network link, or you're about to install a brand new cable run between two rooms in your house or even between buildings, before you go and order some more Copper Cat 6 cable, it might be worth considering putting in a fiber optic link instead to get the best possible network speeds with maximum bandwidth. Running fiber optic cables as part of your home or office network is less expensive and easier than you might think, even if it's already using copper cables like Cat 6 or Cat 5e elsewhere. All you need is some network switches with SFP ports and some fiber optic cables. Alternatively, you can use a small media converter like this at each end of a simple cable run, and you can even extend fiber optic cables all the way into your devices if you add an inexpensive SFP PCIe network card or a USB adapter to your computer. For this demo, I'll be using these two QSFP tech switches, two SFP modules, and an LC to LC fiber optic patch lead, and special thanks to QSFP tech for sending all these over free of charge for this video. These are managed switches with no DHCP, so first I'll need to set a static local IP on my laptop and then connect directly to each one in turn and give them their own IP address on my local network, as these ones were both at 192.168.0.1 out of the box, which just so happened to be the IP address of my Netgear Orbi router. On these QSFP Tech models, the login credentials are admin and admin, and then I had to guess which button to click as it defaults to Chinese, which I don't speak, but it's the one on the left. Then I switched to English, went to L3 Config, then VLAN interfaces and IP addresses, and changed the IP address of each switch to be different from each other and anything else on my local network. This switch has eight standard gigabit RJ45 ports, but you'll see it also has two SFP ports protected by these little dust covers which just pull out. These are where you can connect your fiber optic cables. And this here is a fiber optic patch cable like the fiber equivalent of a patch lead like this. You'll immediately notice how thin it is compared to your bog standard ethernet cable, which is another advantage of using fiber. For example, if you've got limited space for cabling and wiring conduits. Light can only be sent in one direction at a time, so that's why the fiber optic cable is actually two cables in one, one for transmitting data and one for receiving. Using fiber optic cables is also great for future proofing because the fact that signals travel down them at the speed of light means that the only limiting factor for data transfer is that of the modules and switches used at either end of the cable. So you can upgrade those in years to come, but the cable itself can just be installed once and forgotten about. You'll never need to replace it to get better speeds in the future because the speed of light is already the maximum speed of anything permitted by the fundamental laws of physics. There are a few types of connector that you might find at the end. These are called LC ends, but you can't just plug them straight into the SFP port on the switch. You first need a compatible SFP module like these. SFP stands for Small Form Factor Pluggable, and they're small modular transceivers used at both ends of the cable run to convert the data into light pulses and back again. Pull out the dust covers on both the switch and the SFP module, and slide the SFP module into the SFP port on the switch with the black clip facing upwards like this. Before you plug the fiber cable into the SFP module, you need to remove the little dust covers, and it's very important not to get the ends of the cables dirty. Any specks of dust, dirt, moisture, sweat, or grease can block the signal and stop it from working, so only take the dust caps off when you're ready to slide the cable into the module, and keep them safe for if you need to unplug the cable again in the future. There is a cleaning pen linked in the video description if you do have problems with the dirty cable, and if you've got extremely deep pockets, there's also a full-blown testing kit as well. Plug the cable into the SFP module until it gently clicks, and then do the same on the other end of the cable, and there you are. It's effectively the same as an Ethernet cable now. Just plug it in and it'll work, so the two switches could be placed in different rooms or even in different buildings with the fiber cable connecting them. Since this switch also has standard RJ45 plugs, I can connect it to my wider network and have a mix of copper and fiber, but who knows, maybe in 10 years' time it'll all be fiber. Let me know in the comments if you think fiber optics will completely replace copper cables like Cat6 one day. I can verify that the optical cable is working by connecting the first switch to the rest of my network with a copper patch lead, and then connecting my laptop to the second switch with a second patch cable, and pinging google.com or running an internal speed test to my Synology NAS. To unplug the cable, just press down on the clip and gently pull out, then replace the two dust covers immediately, as well as the dust cover for the SFP module. You can remove the SFP module from the switch too, for example to upgrade it to a faster one, in the future by pulling the black clip like this. If you're not putting another SFP module in its place right away, replace the dust cover too to prevent ingress. Fiber optic is great, but if you do need to stick to copper, or if you have some existing cable runs that need repairing, either with an RJ45 plug or keystone termination, you can learn how to do both those tasks by watching the videos on screen now.